Kia ora and welcome. Today I am down at the Riverton Police Department sitting across from Chief of Police, Chief Don Hudson. How are you today, Don? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Now I do have some questions here and we will just jump straight into it. Okay. Okay, so the first one, how long have you been in the police force? I have been a police officer in the state of Utah for 34 years. I just hit my 34th year. I actually started at the Utah State Prison, uh, then moved to the Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office, and then we had the opportunity three years ago to uh, form a new police department here in Riverton City. As we separated from the Unified Police Department, uh, th there was an opportunity for me to leave UPD and come to Riverton and create a whole new police department. And that's been a great joy, a challenge, and uh, here we are three years later and we seem to be establishing ourselves here in the community and, and doing some really good things. So that's where we're at. 34 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so following on from that question, what made you decide to join the police force? I don't know if I would say I fell into it, but it, it was certainly not something I grew up and I wanted to always be a police officer. And in fact, I went to school uh, and became my majors in finance. So I like numbers a lot. I, I'm, I like math and I like the certainty of math. And, uh, and I, I was in engineering at one point. But I always wanted uh, to help people, and I always wanted to have an exciting career. And so when I, when I started down my path of uh, entertaining, should I go to law school or what postgraduate degree should I get, uh, I, I was contemplating uh, law school and contemplating some other postgraduate degrees, and I, I thought, no, I, I just want something exciting. And I was working at the time in finance, sitting at a desk, doing a lot of analytics and numbers, and, and I found that to be quite boring, actually. And I was always making excuses to get up and move around. So I, I said, I need, a, 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 I need an opportunity. A at the same time, I also joined the military, so I, I do like action, uh, so to speak, and uh, so I wanted to take my, my military activities and kind of turn it into a career, although I didn't want to go full-time military, so law enforcement seemed like a, a natural fit for me, so I started down that path and the rest is history. Wow, gosh. Finance. Yeah. <laughs> Finance it's, police chief. It sure helped me, uh, ironically, in being a police chief and, and making sure we fit within budget. Yes. And unfortunately, as you get into administration in police department, it, it feels a lot more like a business uh, than it does the action of the street. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so completely different subject. What is your favorite activity to do in Salt Lake? Golf. That's easy for me. So uh, a few years ago, I, I got a part-time job at a golf course because I really like golf. As you age, and somebody that has always been active, I like sports and uh, all different kinds of sports, but as you get a little bit older, uh, the chance of injury when you play basketball and football and some of these other activities becomes a lot more likely. And I found golf to keep me, uh, to take care of my competitive edge. Uh, because you never master it, and so I really enjoy the game of golf. So every opportunity during my free time, other than I like to work out and jog and do some of those things to just try to stay fit, but as far as an activity, golf is my number one. Okay, that's something I haven't really tried yet, but it's, it's on my list. It's fun. Okay, where is your favorite place to eat out? So I am all about getting uh, a bang for your buck, so I I don't necessarily like fine uh, dining or fine cuisine. I'm more of a sizzler, uh, all-you-can-eat salad bar <laughs> type guy. So Sizzler is one of my favorite restaurants to go to. And if I had to choose, that's where I went on my birthday. So that must be my favorite place must to eat. Must be. I think that's my daughter's favorite place to eat too. She was just talking about it the other day. I really like it. <laughs> she thinks their crab salad is Love like it. <laughs> love everything. They have the best salad bar around. And it's interesting because salad bars have kind of gone away, especially mm -hmm. during COVID. Yeah. It became very difficult. And a lot of them had gotten rid of them anyway but yeah they have the best salad bar i like to choose my own food and the, my own mix and rather, rather than just be restricted to a menu yeah fair enough okay so where is your dream holiday location 
boy, I don't take a lot of vacations, but it would have to be somewhere that uh, is good weather. So I've really enjoyed Hawaii in the past. So if I had to choose, I would probably go to a beach in Hawaii. Nice. I do like Maui. It's very nice there. I've been to all the islands. I actually took a, tr uh, a cruise uh -huh. that went to every island. So I've seen all of them, and uh, they're all great. And I, I do like Maui a lot. Uh, I liked the remoteness of Kauai, and I, uh, I like it all. I mean, it's just the weather's great, and it's relaxing. Yeah, there's not much to not like about Hawaii. Sure. <laughs> okay, so... Getting back to Riverton in general, with all of the overnight crimes and stuff coming out of people's vehicles and that sort of stuff, what can uh, residents do to better secure you know, that from happening? We get this question a lot. So uh, the, the number one key, uh, obviously if you can keep your vehicles uh, uh, in your garage, that's the, the, the most optimal. Uh, if you can't, don't have the room for that, you certainly need to remove everything of value out of your vehicles. It's amazing the, the number of guns that we have people leave in their vehicles and then they're stolen uh, as a result of a vehicle burglary or very, very expensive tools. So mm -hmm. people uh, make a living uh, with the tools in their truck and so it seems like vehicle burglaries really pick on what they perceive to be work trucks because yeah. they know there's going to be valuable tools plus they can just immediately run to the pawn shop and get cash for a tool or sell them online mm -hmm. um, so they go for high dollar tools they go for guns obviously uh, and anything else of value so the first thing I would say is remove all things of value especially high value from your vehicle I've heard a lot of people talk about whether I should just leave it unlocked and let them rifle through and they're not going to find it I don't know if I agree with that 100 percent I think you should make it more difficult uh, the more difficult you can make it they're going to move on to another target so I do believe in locking vehicles I believe in uh, lots of lights uh, motion lights are, are great cameras uh, a lot of people are disregarding there's so many cameras out there now so a lot of the thieves will try to conceal their identity and they're on to that but once again, they're looking for the easiest target. And so if the, this person has all sorts of lights and they're lit up like, a, uh, like the sun in the middle of the night and everything's locked and there's nothing of value, they're going to move on to uh, another area. So those are a few of the things that I guess I would suggest. Um, secure your vehicle, well lit. Uh, in fact, motion lights. If you have a dog that happens to be out and is going to react when somebody is on the property, mm -hmm. that's always a good thing too, although it does bother your neighbor, so <laughs> there's a, a little bit of a balance there. Yeah. So Okay, fair enough. Um, so what advice would you give to a high school student that was contemplating going into the police force? Anybody that's contemplating going into the police force, I would encourage them to talk to a lot of people that are in the profession. There's a lot of misconceptions about, like, a lot of people will grow up and say, I want to be a SWAT cop, or I want to be a canine cop, or I want to be a motor officer. And they need to understand that that isn't, you don't just walk into the police force and go into those specialty type jobs, whether it's detective or canine or SWAT, or you, you have to love being a patrol officer. You have to love putting a uniform on and driving a marked car and responding to domestic violence calls in the middle of the night because everybody starts as a police officer on patrol. Mm -hmm. And you have to love that. If you hate that and you're just waiting for the opportunity to do something else in your career, you're not going to be as satisfied as you could be. There are other options in, in federal law enforcement where you could just wear a suit and tie, join the FBI or the ATF or DEA or some of those other who are all investigative, You where you wouldn't respond as a patrol officer. So there are differences between federal law enforcement and local and state law enforcement. Um, so you need to do your research and kind of uh, angle toward. The reason I bring that up is if you're going to go into federal law enforcement, you need a college degree typically mm -hmm. uh, to even be eligible for that. So I always encourage people to go to college. It doesn't matter that much what your degree is in. Like we talked about before, my degree is in finance, yeah. although I was eligible for some promotions and, and received extra credit for having a degree even though it wasn't in the exact related field. Mm -hmm. Because they recognize that as an administrator, as you promote, that there is value in a degree. So I always encourage people to go uh, and get their college degree because you have that time frame between graduating from high school 
before you can even become eligible, although they're changing that a little bit. Uh, as it stands now, if you want to be a, a peace officer, which is a category one law enforcement officer uh, eligible to, uh, to be a, a police officer, you, you have to be 21 years old. So you have that interim where you need to do, be doing something and you might as well be getting your degree yeah. uh, during that time because it will be helpful in the future. So do your research, talk to as many cops as you can, stay clean because we all do a background check uh, and if you have uh, different criminal activities even though you think it may not be a big deal, it may disqualify you or make you may make somebody just think twice about you versus this person over here who has no criminal record whatsoever. Uh, so even, even as far as speeding tickets and those kinds of things. So obeying the law is important if you're going to be in law enforcement uh, and make sure that you understand that component. Uh, and then stay physically fit. Uh, every law enforcement entity ha has some type of physical uh, test in order to uh, determine it. They don't have it throughout your career, but certainly for initial entry, you have to be able to pass a physical fitness test and you have to do it to become post-certified in every state that I know of. Okay. Thank you so much. So final question, what is your favorite season for work orientated and then for your personal life? I like the heat of summer is hard because in law enforcement we have to wear dark uniforms and we wear vests a lot very very hot it's hard to function when it's too hot so I don't like heat anyway um, so I am not a hundred degree guy and remember in law enforcement you got to work in the elements so we don't like the too much heat and we don't like too much winter snow crazy cold that type of thing. And obviously here in Utah, really don't like the inversion yeah. when you don't see the sun for a week or two. So I am a fall or spring guy. I would probably say spring because if I had to choose fall or spring, I like spring because you have the hope. In fall, you're already going into the holidays and the stress associated with that. And so I guess I'm not in quite as good a mood in fall as I am in spring because you've got the, everything is coming alive again. You're coming out of winter. It boosts your mood and you know you got summer to follow up on that. So I would say spring. Okay, wonderful. Well, that is it for my questions. Do you have anything you'd like to add? I don't know. Thanks for doing this and thank you for your support of the police department. We, uh, I guess I would, that's one thing I would say is uh, it's fun to be uh, to uh, police in a community that supports the police department, and we have felt that here in Riverton for sure. Uh, you hear about all the stories around the country about how bad it is with policing and how adversarial the relationship is between the community and the police department or the media and the police department. We just don't feel that here in Utah. We have felt nothing but support. Uh, and that makes it a lot easier to do our job. In fact, we can't do our job without the cooperation. There's just not enough of us. We have to have the cooperation of the law-abiding citizens and the community support to, to do our job and, and make everybody safe. So uh, I guess I would just say I appreciate uh, the support that you have offered to the police department specifically and the community in general. So thank Well, you. we definitely do appreciate you and the entire police department. You guys are amazing. So thank you. Okay. Okay, that's a wrap.